Hey students, this video is going to go over how to predict products of single replacement reactions. So with single replacement reactions, we know, for example, that we would have a single element and a compound. Let's say that we have, you know, something like CO, CO3 um, over here on the reactant side. We would expect to also see a single element and a compound on the product side as well. Well, in a single replacement reaction, you have one element that's going to switch places with the element in a compound. Okay, so if the single element is a metal, like in this example here, it's going to switch places with the metal that's in the compound. Then the metal is going to end up coming over here and being by itself. So we have to use this activity series on our periodic table, the lower right part of the periodic table, to figure out if our reaction is actually going to happen. So the way we can tell that single replacement reactions would happen is that the single element, in this case aluminum, has to be higher on the activity series than the element it's going to replace. So since aluminum is a metal and it's going to replace the cobalt, we looked and find cobalt here, the aluminum is higher, so the reaction would happen. So now our products, the cobalt would be by itself and it would be a solid. And then the aluminum and the chlorine are going to make a compound and we want to make sure that we use their charges from the periodic table so that we can drop and swap. Aluminum is three plus, chlorine is one minus, so this would be AlCl3. We can use the solubility chart that we learned about in the other video to determine that this is going to be an aqueous solution, okay? <clears throat> Let's say, for example, that we have silver and copper chloride. So we want to see if the reaction would happen. So we find over here in our activity series, we look to see where silver is, and silver is way down here at the bottom. I can't even scroll down that far. Silver is way down here at the bottom, and copper is right here. Since silver is not higher on the activity series than the copper, because it would replace the copper because they're both metals, we would simply write no reaction. Now, if this was switched, for example, and the copper was the single element and the silver was in the compound, I'm going to switch this to NO3 though, so that we have a um, aqueous. So the copper would switch places with the silver because they're both metals. We can see over here that the copper is higher on our list than the silver. So the silver would end up being by itself. Silver metal is solid. Now, if you have a transition metal as your single element, you would assume a plus two charge when you make your compound. So we would assume that Cu has a two plus charge, and then we have NO3 that has a negative one charge. So this would be Cu, NO3, in parentheses, with a two behind it. And all nitrates are aqueous. Okay, so this is how single element um, or single replacement works. Let's say that we have a nonmetal. So let's say that we have fluorine gas and it's reacting with, um, let's say, aluminum bromide. And we want to see if this single replacement reaction is going to happen. So you want to look at the single element to see which side of the chart you're going to look on. So fluorine is in nonmetal. It's going to replace the nonmetal this time. So that means it's going to change places with the bromine. The bromine is going to come over here. So fluorine is higher up than the bromine. So the reaction would still happen. The bromine is diatomic. So we would write it as Br2. Bromine at room temperature is a liquid. And then we would have aluminum and fluorine come together. Remember, the metal is always going to get written first. We want to get those charges from the periodic table so that we can drop and swap and make our new compound. Okay, so notice here it switched places with the nonmetal because it was a nonmetal. Up on the top, it switched places with the metal because it was a metal. I want to focus really quick on hydrogen. 
On this activity series, hydrogen is in three places. Because if you react hydrogen with a, um, like a metal, so if hydrogen is in a compound, such as in water, in steam, in acid, it's in a compound, and the, it would um, be replaced by the metal because hydrogen would act as a cation. So here we have hydrogen in water, which is liquid water, hydrogen in steam, which is H2O gas, and then hydrogen in acid. An acid is when we have a hydrogen in front of the compound. So like HNO3, for example, or H2SO4, for example, okay? So let's say that we have uh, magnesium reacting with uh, phosphoric acid, which you don't have to know this. So we would try to see if this reaction would happen. So the magnesium would switch places with the hydrogen. They're on the same side of the activity series, okay? So magnesium is right here. Hydrogen and acid is way down here, so the reaction would happen. So now hydrogen is by itself, which is H2, because it's diatomic, that's a gas. And then magnesium and phosphate would form a compound. You wanna make sure again that you get those charges from your periodic table so that you can drop and swap correctly and write these formulas. So Mg3PO4 two, and that would be solid. All right, so that is how you predict products for single replacement reactions. If y'all have any questions about that, just let me know. All right, thanks.